and welcome to Creative Magic Club. Together, we'll discover inspirational stories of creative entrepreneurs living out their dreams, doing the work they are most passionate about, and building wealth in magical and fun ways. While building a six-figure income as a writer and coach, helping other women to launch their dream businesses, I've connected with so many incredible people and seen it proven again and again that you can thrive financially doing whatever it is you are passionate about. I am here to share life-changing strategies for mindset, making money, and reaching more people with your work in a business and life filled with creativity, freedom, and fun. Hi, Sarah Mack here from withsarahmack.com and welcome back to the Creative Magic Club podcast. I'm so excited to be here and this is actually my first episode of the year. I took, I think what ended up being like maybe a six or seven week break from producing the show and yeah, we're coming back in with an astrology update for us to be focused on and it's a big one and I'm going to be diving into some themes and some prompts that you can reflect on to you know be living in harmony with the stars in your work and in your communication and your storytelling and your work in the world as well as you know your own transformational um inner work So before we dive in, I'm going to give you a brief update. Um, So we're going to be talking all about Aquarius because it's Aquarius season and it's a very potent time with Pluto entering Aquarius for the first time in our lifetime. And he's going to be staying here for 20 years before moving into the next sign. So this is like a huge, a hugely significant shift in collective energy like this is a pivotal time for us so there are some big themes that are potentially going to be playing out in our life for a really really long time and I feel like it's a good time just to be reflecting on them especially with the beginning of the year and you know we often do that a lot this time of year um anyway and I've been doing that a lot And, you know, I thought that, you know, I took two and a half weeks completely off my business, like no content, no clients, my team were on a break. Um, I went traveling, I went skiing in Canada, in British Columbia, and then I went to Mexico for my first in-person retreat, other than doing a 10-day Vipassana in India, which was like significantly less relaxing (laughs) than the one I was just on in Mexico. And I had an amazing time. Um, some of you who have been following me may know I I had been struggling with long COVID symptoms pretty much all of last year. And it got particularly bad when I got COVID again towards the end of last year. And yeah, having that time off, having some time in the sunshine, um, it definitely helped. And I needed that. Not that we don't have sunshine here in California, <laughs> but um But yeah, having, you know, like a proper vacation to really switch off. And then I was half expecting because I hadn't taken that long of a complete break for pretty much since I started um, as an entrepreneur over eight years ago that, you know, I was going to have like a giant epiphany or like some new idea was going to bubble up or I would want to come back and like change the way I was doing everything. And you know, I was holding space for that too. Um, and I was open to that, but actually I've come back and not wanted to change much, (laughs) which is great because I think one of the gifts in, you know, having a significantly reduced capacity, um, due to the fatigue and the headaches after, um, having COVID is that it's really, forced me to simplify in my business and 
in doing that and being open to shifting things and just like cutting away the fat and the things that aren't really getting the results, aren't really getting like the biggest impact, you know, any unnecessary um, pursuits other than really that, you know, core 20% that's bringing me and my clients the best results through my business has all been trimmed away for now. And it's just great. (laughs) Like I'm fucking loving it. I'm working one-on-one only with clients at the moment. We get to go super in depth. I get to know my clients really well. Um, We work in Voxer only, so I barely have any calls on my calendar other than the odd 90-minute intensive. And, you know, and I get to spend my days really in flow with my energy levels. My clients actually probably get more support than if they had a weekly call because I touch base with them pretty much every day. They get feedback, um, you know, we get to have chats. I get to know everything that's going on with them. Um, I'm working on content edits for them. So they're having a lot of momentum, feeling super supported, getting really great results. And I get to lie in my hammock and talk to people on Boxer. (laughs) And if I need to take a nap, I can take a nap. And there's no, you know, like scheduling restrictions. So I'm obsessed with this new version of my business. And it's felt weird to let go of group programs because that was really like a core part of my message, a core part of my business vision, you know, at the beginning of last year. And I love running group programs and I believe in them. And, you know, that's definitely still a part of my long-term vision for my business. But for now, I'm like, let's just keep it simple. I'm not really doing any live events. I'm just producing content and yeah, it's working and it's feeling really, really great. So there's always a blessing when we get squeezed, if we're, you know, open to the shifts. And as we're moving into this next period, obviously, depending on where Aquarius is in your chart, um, there's going to be different themes for you to consider and to meditate on and journal on and to really think about how some of these themes are playing out for you right now and, you know, what they could mean for you in really focusing on them over the next 20 years. So I actually created some prompts specific for each Aquarius house placement, which is over on my Instagram feed, Creative Magic Club. So definitely go and check that out. I'm not going to go through them on this episode, but I'm going to go through some of the broader themes to just, you know, get you in the zone, see what's bubbling up for you. And I'm also going to create, uh, my next episode will be focused on money prompts and how we can focus on using these particular energies for healing and elevating our relationship with money. Because, you know, Aquarius is all about humanitarianism. It's all about the collective. And so I've really, as always, you know, it's an everyday thing when you have a business, asking myself, like, what is the impact that I want to make? Um, What, you know, what do I really want to be focused on in my work? And I feel like I've evolved a lot over the years, but it's kind of, I've got to that place where it's really the same answer over and over again. Like, I want to be helping to heal the collective and our relationship with money, moving away from toxicity and dis-ease in our relationship with money so that we can just use it as a tool to elevate the rest of the work that we do. Um, And I've been having a lot of conversations with people in real life about this lately, which has just really reinvigorated, um, you know, the focus on that topic for me. I feel like a lot of creatives, a lot of people in the quote unquote conscious community, like people who really give a fuck about the planet and want to do good things and can see or can see solutions, right? Embody solutions, like see what we need. Um, but like want to be bringing these solutions to more and more people, want to be healing our communities and elevating humanity. Like there's a lot of resistance around the world of sales, around the world of asking for money and receiving money and being abundantly paid and asking money for money from people. And, you know, I just think if we can clean this up and have a harmonious, easeful, flowing relationship with money, 
um, which, you know, is obviously challenging within the structures that we live in um, that have been super and continue to be super um, oppressive and um, hierarchical and toxic. But, you know, there is a way. There is a way to to be in relationship with money in the way that feels good to us, that feels an integrity and authenticity and that, you know, requires us to build things in a different way. So yeah, that's like continuing to be top of mind for me to be talking about and um, creating resources around. Obviously I'm planning on publishing my book, which is all about money mindset and, you know, storytelling, which is at the heart of it. Like money, relationships is really at the heart of money and the way that we relate to each other and the way that we communicate with each other and storytelling is at the heart of relationships. So just looking at the ways in which we're in relationship, the ways in which we're telling stories both to each other and to ourselves internally in the voice in our head and how can we clean these up? How can we be more in alignment? How can we be more in integrity and more empowered in those conversations so that they feel good and they create they create beautiful things in the world? Hey, I have a really exciting new free series that I want to make sure you know about. It's called Sign Soulmate Clients with Astrology. And I created this because when I work with clients using their astrology charts, they stop trying to sell offers in a way that feels like pushing a boulder up a hill. They start selling what they're really excited to offer. They raise their rates, often doubling them. And soulmate clients start showing up more quickly and easily than ever which is why I'm so thrilled to share this special three-part training series with you to show you how to read specific parts of your chart to cut the drama of overthinking your storytelling and your prices and cut straight to the actions and insights that lead to signing soulmate clients consistently with ease month after month. So when you sign up, you're gonna get instant access to video number one, which is all about signing soulmate clients by selling from your sun sign. Video number two is about tapping into your sales flow through your second house. And video number three is going to show you how to create your unique ritual for consistent clients and money flow. You don't need to know anything more than your birth time, date and place. And I will show you what you need to know about your birth chart. This is for anyone looking to create a more consistent flow of sales from soulmate clients. And you can find this by going to my website with saramac.com under the freebies tab or by the link in my bio on my social channels. I'm so curious about what Aquarius season is going to mean for you. Mine, um, Aquarius for me is actually in the fifth house, which is Leo, which is my sun sign, um, which is all about creativity, arts, you know, children, play, inner child, um so yeah that's something that I'm fully marinating on and coming up with some ideas and feeling into and some of the main themes with Pluto and Aquarius that we're going to that we're going to be feeling that you probably already are feeling are around power around accountability and innovation humanitarianism and deep collective transformation so definitely check out the content prompts on my Instagram and you can use these themes specifically related to where Aquarius is in your chart to spark some content ideas, some story ideas that will, you know, give your soulmate clients a peek into the real you and getting to know you and what's on your heart and your mind right now and to bring some of the major themes in your own unique value and power to the forefront in your brand message. Um, So I can't wait for you to check those out, to dive into those. Please send me a message. Like if you create some content using these prompts, please send it to me for me to show you some love. And um, yeah, I would love to hear from you about this. So yeah, some of the things to think about Aquarius, like one of the main themes is innovation and progression and humanitarianism. Like how can we create solutions for the betterment of humanity? And another quality associated with Aquarius is eccentricity, which I love. Um, you know, it's that like free spirit, but it's also analytical. It's also technology focused. And 
you know, there's a fine line between like the eccentric genius and the destructive rebel. And I think a lot of us identify with that spectrum. Um, you know, it's very easy to to use our emotions, especially when we're talking about Pluto. That's like um, rule Scorpio. So it's all about those deep, dark emotions, which can be so fertile for for action and for movement and for change and for revolution, right? Like the revolutionary is very much an archetype of Aquarius. And I very much identified with being a rebel pretty much since I was a teenager. Like I was always getting in trouble. I got it, you know, I almost got expelled for smoking weed in school. Um, I just hated authority. I wanted to break all the rules. I didn't want to be told what to do, you know, and I think I was told, I was being told a lot of things that were just so, I was being rejected, you know, by, by like the systems that I was growing up in who were constantly denying my creativity and devaluing it and telling me to like get a proper job and like at least study English, like don't pursue the arts, you'll be, you'll be broke, you know, like I was constantly feeling denied. So, you know, it's totally valid, right? Being the rebel, being somebody who's standing up to the belief systems that are being oppressed on us that we don't feel good about, don't agree with, and don't want to give into. Um, But I think sometimes, you know, like the wounding around that can lead us to shooting ourselves in the foot, like my background with finances and, you know, like living, not really living anywhere. Like I had no residency in a country for a period of time. I was like in between residency statuses and, you know, I didn't file taxes for a few years and, you know, I was had like a real fuck the system mentality and I grew up listening to new metal. And like, um, that was, you know, a big part of the way that I was living my life, which, you know, ultimately didn't serve me (laughs) in the best way. Um, I had to file my taxes eventually and it was not fun when I came around and, you know, had to do like three years of backlog. So, um, so yeah, that's just something to consider. Like, where are you being rebellious where maybe you could be leaning more into revolutionary and innovative genius in creating solutions and like yeah we all get to break some rules because that's how change is created but how can we do that in just like the most empowered way you know and looking for the most empowered vision around that and the most empowered solutions and possibilities where we rally people um towards our vision versus just being reactive to the people who are not in alignment with that vision, if that makes sense. So like accepting your eccentricity, accepting what makes you different, because this is where true innovation comes from. So if you're feeling different around something, around the way you do things or want to do things, or the way you don't like other people are doing things in certain areas, like that's really a gift to be paying attention to and to nurture that and to cherish that and um, and see what that, you know, those feelings of discomfort are maybe trying to tell you. Um, yeah, this is like being a pioneer, right? How can you be a pioneer in innovation? And innovation is change. So usually change is going to be driven and motivated by all of the things that we currently don't like or are in resistance to. So just pay attention to that for you. So on the next episode, I'm going to dive into some of my favorite, I'm calling them like aspects of technology or pieces of technology, but not how you would, you know, most commonly think of technology, Um, but like tools. And these, some of them are inner tools. Some of them are relational tools and practices that I feel have really had the biggest impact for me and that I feel in all of my years of, you know, healing my relationship with money um, and transforming my relationship with money that have are really the most potent. So I'm going to talk about what some of those things are. I'm going to share a practice with you that I've been using lately that is like quick and dirty and powerful. And, you know, I think this is like a really great theme to be thinking about in this 20 year giant period of Pluto and Aquarius. Like what are the tools? What are the practices? What are the structures 
that we can set up for ourselves that are going to become a fertile ground for innovation and for change and for rising and, you know, innovating and changing humanity. Like, no big deal, right? But so often it's those small things. It's those consistent daily habits that give us the strength and the structures and the support to, you know, go to the next level in our work and in our innovation and in our creativity. Um, So I'm going to be talking about some of those. And, you know, this is a very potent time for healing. Pluto, rule Scorpio. If you listen to my podcast episode on Scorpio season, there's, there's going to be a lot of similar themes and like putting on our rubber gloves and doing the deep, dirty healing work because it all comes down to relationship, right? Like our relationship with ourselves, our relationship with the people who cause us the most pain, our relationship with each other, with humanity. And it's looking at the pain and alchemizing it that is going to lead us to those breakthroughs, to that innovation, to that that compulsion and momentum to create the changes that we wish to see and that we're here to create. This is all information that rather than numbing out and trying to um, distract or avoid, like looking at it, being in it, feeling it, transmuting it and using it um, to create magical things and to rise like the phoenix, phoenix from the ashes. And Pluto, there's so, so, so much power in Pluto. So I'm so excited to share that with you. I'm so excited. If you want to hear, um, share your takeaways and your breakthroughs, hit me up, send me a message on Instagram, Creative Magic Club. And I'm so grateful that you're here. Please, if you haven't already, go and leave a five-star review to support the show. There's going to be a lot more astrological updates, sales talk, money talk, helping you to make more money while you're making a bigger and bigger impact that you are here to create. That's fun for you to do it. So I'm sending you so much love and we'll see you next week. Bye. For more inspirational content, head over to my website withsarahmack.com and please support the show by liking, commenting, and subscribing.